Good morning and welcome to OER Basics for Health and Human Services in Nursing. My name is Allison Sills and I am one of your new instructional librarians at CCCC. I am based at the Lee campus and there's my email, asills at cccc.edu. So let's get started. So what are OERs? OERs stands for Open Educational Resources, and they are teaching, learning, and research resources that, uh, that reside in the public domain or permit free use. They are also a tool for connection among faculty, students, and the library because you want to provide OERs for students who need them and the library can help you find them. That's what makes OERs the start of a conversation. So why use OERs? This is one of the most recent inform this is the most recent information that I could find with statistics and it shows how the pace of textbooks in dark blue has not been keeping up with the normal rate of inflation that you can see in Burgundy. The consumer price index or CPI is the most widely used method of measuring in inflation. And this graph shows that college textbook prices have risen more than three times faster than normal inflation. When it comes to the costs our students incur going to college, those costs being tuition, fees, housing, books, transportation, there is one that we can control and that is books. OERs are one way to do this. So how else are OERs beneficial? Equity, retention, flexibility, these all lead to student success. OERs support equity because more affordability means more accessibility. For students, OERs provide an affordable alternative to expensive textbooks that may be a deciding factor in whether a student can or cannot take a course or move forward with their education. According to the Chronicle of Higher Education, seven in 10 students didn't purchase a textbook at least once because it was too expensive. And one in five college students has skipped or deferred a class because the price of a required learning resource because of the price of the, um, their learning resource or their books. OERs level the playing field for all students and allow everyone to achieve the dream of higher education. As much as 39% of college fees can go towards books and supplies and studies have shown that reducing these costs with the use of OERs has increased retention rates. In a study by the City University of New York of 14 classes where no curriculum changes were made, only OERs were introduced, withdrawal rates dropped by 6%, and grades increased, and failure rates decreased by 2%. OERs provide flexibility in several ways. They are available from day one of class, no waiting and no shortages. 60% of students have reported delaying the purchase of textbooks until their financial aid was available. Waiting could potentially put the student behind in class, starting the student off on the wrong foot. OERs can alleviate the weight and start all students equally. And students can keep the materials after class is over without the chore or necessity of having to sell back their books to recoup some funds. OERs are also editable, another way they are flexible. So let's look at that a little more. The O in OER stands for open because you can do anything you want to the material after downloading it. You can retain it to make, own, and control copies of the content. You can redistribute it. You can share it in its original version or you can edit it and share that. You can revise it by adapting, adjusting, modifying, or altering the material. Faculty members don't have to rely on a textbook company to create content. They can download the material that they like, edit it, edit in anything, add information they might desire, whatever they think might fit better for their particular student population. You can remix it. You can mash it up. 
with content from another material you found somewhere else. And you can reuse it indefinitely and for any purpose in different mediums, including print. And you can reuse the content for any purpose, meaning you can read it on any device or print it out in its entirety. Did you know that some of our health science courses are already using OER materials? Here is a list of classes using them right now. Personal health and wellness, exercise science, stress management, fit and well for life, pharmaceutical issues, and pharmacology. They're already using OERs in the classroom. So where do you find OERs? Let's look at a couple of resources available right now. First, please visit CCCC Libraries Resource Guide on the topic of OERs at cccc.libguides.com slash OER. Let's take a look at that. I'm going directly to the link. Let me show you how to get there from our website. If you go to the library's website and you go to research guides, expand the course and programs of study, scroll down to Faculty OER Toolbox. This is how you get to the page from the library front page. So research guides, Faculty OER Toolbox. On this page, you'll find a few informative videos got the five R's again. You've got an OER starter kit, which is a book that is itself an OER, a link to a grant initiative to inspire faculty to adopt OERs, and statistics to consider. Did you know that as much as 12% of any student population could be facing homelessness. And if you factor in housing insecurity or the inability to reliably cover your rent and utilities, that percentage jumps to almost 45%. These are sobering figures that illustrate how important offering OERs can be. Also on this page are additional tabs like finding OERs, here you will see additional links for popular OER repositories, even more that are listed in my PowerPoint. Some of these repositories even offer complete courses. In CLive, offers Open Education North Carolina, which offers te textbooks for many health and human services, including, and nursing courses, including personal health and wellness and anatomy and physiology. And let's look at OER Commons. If you Google OER, your first result is often OER Commons. This resource is easy to search. You simply type in what you're looking for. I've looked up a couple of things here already. And you can refine it by subject, education, and standard. Several different standards are listed. I'll just keep it the first choice. Let's take a look at the results. Once you see the result, you can again refine it by these facets, education standard, subject area, education level, and so on, media format, education level, community college, let's see how many results that returns, 905. 
You can also sort by rating. Consumers do rate these materials. So if you are looking to see what other people have said about the resource you are interested in, you could see if it has a customer rating. You'll see that right here. Sometimes there are comments and sometimes there's just ratings. So choices are out there. We still have 905 results for our education level in nursing. These general resources are resources that can get you started. But if you're looking for more resources specific to health and human services and nursing, let's look at these specific resources. Here are several specifically related health related resources for OERs. Some of these are websites and some of these are eBooks. Those that have authors' names, they're eBooks. Let's check out OpenRN. OpenRN is a project led by the Chippewa Valley Technical College. Their faculty collaboratively develop textbooks and virtual simulations based on the Wisconsin Technical College system and the current NCLEX RN test plan. Their textbooks undergo national peer review by faculty, deans, industry members, and nursing students to ensure that the content is accurate and relevant and that it's written in clear language for nursing students based on current practices. If you've ever wondered if OERs can compete with edited and published material, what I just told you about this open RN should assure you that some are very good. And as I mentioned before, resources like OER Commons will allow you to sort results by customer rating. So here on this open RN, you'll see reality scenario, virtual reality scenarios, virtual simulations, and your textbooks. So we had one question during our live Zoom meeting that was this concern that students would be able to alter the source material because we said they're editable. The answer to that is no. OERs are editable, but only after being downloaded. So an instructor could download the material, edit it, and make it available to students on Blackboard, or the, the instructor could download it, edit it, and then upload it as a new OER into, say, OER Commons, then send the students the new link. But no changes can be made to the original before downloading. So do you have any other questions that you might have? Any other concerns? You can always email the library with them and we'll find the answer for you. We would love to help and support you. If you can think of anything you'd like to speak to us about, here's our contact information. I've included a link to book an appointment with a librarian because this is a service for both students and faculty. So if you need some time and you want to discuss how to find these resources together, please book an appointment. We'll sit down with you and we'll help you find some resources. Again, my name is Allison Sills and I'm one of your new librarians. Mari Wimberly is also new to CCCC. She's our digital services librarian and we are both located at Lee Branch. I'm sure you already know Morgan, our outreach and assessment librarian. She is based at Harner Branch and Dana Haven is available at Chatham Branch. Please do not hesitate to contact us at any time. And if you would please take a moment to fill out this brief questionnaire, we would appreciate the feedback. 
I hope you found some of this information interesting and informative. Again, if you have any questions, please contact one of us by email, phone, or in person at your convenience. Thank you and have a great day.